Thank you very much. So, am I ready? So, yeah, my name is Patrick. Uh, I work with this group called Ushahidi. I'm also the co-founder of the Crisis Mappers Network, and I'm also a PhD candidate at the Fletcher School at Tufts University in Boston, which is where I and many, many good friends uh, launched the Ushahidi Crisis Map for Haiti. And we started actually in my living room with a few people, but we got to about 300 volunteers from around the world, really, who were basically providing the first responders and the humanitarian community with near real-time crisis mapping support uh, for the operation. So literally, the Marine Corps, FEMA, and others were using the map to send out the choppers and rescue people. And how did we do this? Well, we combed this vast ecosystem of information and really looking at uh, the tweets that were coming out all manually. Uh, Facebook, uh, chat groups, and so on. We even had a, one of our volunteers who was listening to French and Creole radio uh, when people were calling in, and then he would basically add information and map information. So we would geolocate, we would code this information in near real time, and then place it on the map. And so what I want to do with this little Ignite talk is just share one of just really many examples that have happened when you combine this kind of technology with amazing volunteers. This is a picture of some good friends, Nico and Eric Rasmussen with Instead. And this picture is really literally taken right next to the uh, airstrip at um, Port-au-Prince International Airport. And they are basically uh, Skyping with us live, thanks to some of the great work that John Crowley did in civil military coordination. Uh, and Eric was basically directly plugged into the uh, search and rescue operation. So we set up the system whereby Anna Schultz, a good friend of mine, who's also a PhD candidate at Fletcher, he would basically give us reports of trapped individuals, and we would try and basically get the GPS coordinates for those locations. And sometimes they were very obscure. That evening, we got seven locations from Eric, and we got, or Anna Schultz, rather, got the first six pretty quickly, but the seventh one, uh, Un Bon Prix near Napolian Hotel, was a complete mystery, and there was obviously time pressure, not least because the SAR teams, the search and rescue teams, were going to be briefed at 0600 that next morning and sent out to try and find survivors at that location. So what we decided to do after trying on our own to get this information was to try to crowdsource it a little sort of wider. So we sent out a tweet on the Ushahidi tweet and basically said, please, if anybody has any information whatsoever on this location, we really need to know the address and GPS coordinates, obviously so that we can send this back to the SAR teams. Um, this was sort of mid-evening, and a little later, maybe just before midnight, um, a complete stranger went on the crisis map of Haiti, uh, which is what this looks like, and um, clearly had seen our tweet, because when she entered an, information, an incident, she basically copied and pasted the tweet that we had sent out just an hour earlier, and said, well, you know, no luck on un bon prix, but it just turns out that the Napoli Inn Hotel belongs to the Holiday Inn, the chain of the Holiday Inn hotels, and so on. So, and even, you know, it was kind enough to give us the exact address, uh, Rue Capua number 10. So we were one step closer to finding that information. And so we went directly to our favorite resource, uh, namely the Lonely Planet Guide, which we uh, basically bought two copies of the day after the earthquake. And um, basically, they're the most used guides that have never made it to Haiti. Really, really quite, quite helpful information. On this one rare occasion, the Napoli Inn Hotel or the Holiday Inn that we were looking for, was not there, but uh, basically Anna reasoned that the only building that was going to have a pool, you know, in downtown Port-au-Prince along that road has got to be the Holiday Inn, and we had access to very high-resolution satellite imagery from the first sort of few days, even day two, and we were able to locate the basic GPS coordinates for Anna's pool, the, which was part of the Napoli Inn Hotel, but of course, in relation to the Napoli Inn Hotel, we had no other information as to where un bon prix was located, let alone what in the world Un Bon Prix was, right? It was not Au Bon Pain or anything. Um, so you can imagine 1 o'clock, sort of AM rolls around. We haven't slept literally for days, and I'm about to get 20 minutes of sleep, and I see a tweet come back completely out of the blue from a complete stranger who somehow had managed to find somebody who had worked at Un Bon Prix, which turned out to be a bookshop in downtown Port-au-Prince, had found this person's CV, and basically said, hey, you should check this guy out, Marc-Henri Louis, he lives in downtown Brooklyn. Here's his cell phone number, why don't you drop him a line? Um, you can imagine at 1.30 a.m., not sleeping for a few days, that was a little surreal. But, um, so we called the guy up, and uh, you know, he picked up on the second ring, clearly he was awake, and uh, with a mixture of French and English, and in 10, 15 minutes, we were able to actually sort of find out where in Port-au-Prince his former site of employment was, by just guiding us. So that's 
pretty surreal. And what we then did, of course, was Skype that back. It was about 2 a.m. then, and Skype that information back to Eric and the search and uh, rescue teams in downtown Port-au-Prince. Now, all we know is that out of the seven locations that we found GPS coordinates for, um, only one of those locations had um, survivors. That's just, um, I think, obviously very, very tragic. But, you know, what's amazing about this is if you take a group of amazing, committed volunteers who have never worked on these platforms before, and you, you combine that with crowdsourcing, and you combine that with open source cri crisis mapping uh, platforms, you can really do a lot like save lives. Thank you very much.